Carmoja's girl child knows her place right from the early years. So while the boy may find some time to put his head down in the course of the day, she cannot afford to. She will be seen trying to do tasks well beyond her years, even before she begins to understand the gravity of the task. By the time she is a grown-up woman, it is ingrained in her what her contribution must be in the home and society. This is an artisanal gold mine. This little girl has learned from watching her mother. She knows that after the hard rock particles are crushed, this is the process to finding the gold particles at the bottom of the pail. The gold mine has many women engaged in all kinds of activity. They are the breadwinners, so they do their best to make enough money to feed the family. Two thousand shillings per day, and yet this this work of gold needs needs a lot of what water. She didn't have a lot of water, so she just got little. Okay. You see, the other shiny particles is what she wants to get to. But for all the long hard days here, they get a paltry three thousand shillings. And from this, they must take out almost half to buy the water they use to sieve the gold. Men dig the mines. They believe it is too dangerous for women, and they won't allow me to get close to the pit. It is much deeper than it looks from up here, and they say some miners have lost their lives there. Once the stones have been dug out, women take over the work. Mining is an alternative source of livelihood that the Karimajong have taken on in recent years. With the changing times, unpredictable weather and insecurity, what used to be normal is not. The women have laid out responsibilities. Home chores is their tough, and that includes building it, literally. When morning comes, you have to wake up. Go, go, go and collect firewood, which firewood is being used for building, as you're seeing now, building. And what they're building now for today is a, a, what they call a term, a living room. It does not matter if the woman is unwell. Mm, she says that uh, and even in times of sickness, nobody will come to your rescue as a woman, that a man will not do anything to that. Uh, however, she says it's your little, your little ones, if your children are somehow grown up, they will help you, take you to hospital. But in, in terms of survival, if you have maybe a chicken, you'll have to what? You'll have to sacrifice that chicken, sell it in order to buy something for the family because there's nobody to go and do the other works that you've been doing in order to meet family needs. She must tend to the home and her duties even when she is heavily pregnant. She, can, she goes to the bushes, collect firewood with the, all the hot sun on her, aware that she's pregnant, takes it up to town to sell it off and get some money. Uh, that on her way she can even get, before her pregnancy is term, she can get a miscarriage because of the heavy load that she's carrying because of this heat. So you realize that sometimes they end up losing their children also and lose lives. In her menstrual period, she will smear her clothes with enough ghee to turn the bottom black so that in case a drop of blood stains it, it is not seen. She will then take a break from her work, dig up and sit on a pile of sand or soil and wait out the bleeding. You sit in intervals. You sit for some time, then you can get up, go and do your, your work, then again come back, you sit. In her menstruation period, a girl or woman is not allowed to visit the kraal to milk the cows. Maria Mongole tells us that when a baby boy is born, a sharp object called emal is used to cut the cord. From Mariam's description, emal was a bullet used during cattle raids. By using this instrument to cut the boy's cord, they are symbolically initiating the boy into cattle raiding. The girl child is also initiated at birth. If it is a baby girl, what happens is during, after, the, after a mother has given birth, they will get a knife that is normally used for cutting food, cutting greens, that is used at home to cut the cord. Mariam says they are comfortable with the status quo. As a Karamojong woman, they are used to that kind of lifestyle.
because that is how they have been. These women also brew alcohol. The residue from the brew is used to feed the family while they sell the alcohol to get money to buy basic needs at home. Uh -huh. The bateso nowadays, they build together with their women. Probably the, the woman goes to collect the grass, the man is putting the reeds together. That They also want that kind of change, that in the GA now, which is part of Karamoja, men and women are participating. Mariam attended school until primary six. She had just been promoted to primary seven when her current husband paid her bride price with cows and brought her to this village. 120. Mm -hmm, that they paid, uh, they paid 120 cows for her. Hey. <laughs> she could have had more children like her peers, but she has six children because she practiced family planning. While she seems content, some women are not. She says there are still many forced marriages, especially of young girls, even with laws in place prescribing the vice. Mm -hmm. Some, you'll find the girl not interested, but the man is interested, so they have to force you. That sometimes even the father may not, the father of the girl may not be wanting, or both parents may not be wanting them to stay together, but the, the boy will force himself until he gets that girl, has sex with her. Yeah, that nowadays, the situation has changed. They realize that uh, they forced children even at the age of 12 years to get married. Yeah. Josephine Karunji, NTV.